it's a definition, a possible definition in lo is love. We can say that love is when we can say that uh, we have the sky. We have the sky and that the sky has nothing because the sky has no love. The multiple of constellations is thus held in the opening of the two. These are examples of the two of love as the passage of the one of solipsism to the infinite multiplicity of the world. Example of the two of love as a splitting of the grey darkness of the one. But in addition to this, there is also a plotting of the two, an insistence by way of loyalty, of fidelity. This fidelity, this fidelity to love, <coughs> organizes four functions for Beckett, which are also four figures of the subject within love, the subject in love. These four functions are wandering, immobility, imperative, and story. Wandering or traveling presents the infinite chance of a faithful journey of love. It presents the endless crossing of the world when the world is exposed to the effects of the encounter. This function institutes the duration of the two and establishes time as mandated by chance. The second function is just the opposite, that is immobility, which holds, maintains, the fixed point of the first nomination, the naming of the event encounter. The fixed point is, the fir is in law, the first nomination. The immobility is the immobility of the first nomination. It is something like, I love you. It's a fixed point of law. And it is the second function. The third function is that of the imperative. Always continue. Always continue. Even through separating. Decree that separation itself is in love, a form of continuity, a form of continuation. The imperative of the two imposes the strict law of happiness no matter whether one is victim or tormentor. And the fourth function is that of the story, which delivers from the standpoint of the two the latent infinity of the world. The story inscribes step by step in the manner of an archival escort of the wandering all that one may discover in what Beckett calls it's a, an extraordinary nomination, the world of love for Beckett. The blessed time of blue. The blessed time of blue. Love, within its singular duration, these four functions, with these four functions, wandering, immobility, imperative, and story, is something like the blessed time of blue. Beckett uh, formulates the idea of the sexes, of the two sexes, by combining these four functions, by a sort of combination of the four functions. Always, always, it is very important, under the assumption that the event of love has taken place after the event and under the condition of the event of the encounter, 
we have some combination of the four functions. He thus establishes the masculine and feminine polarities of the two. I insist on the fact that the polarities of the two are after the encounter and not in a pre-existing style. Uh, so uh, he establishes the masculine and feminine polarities of the two independently of any empirical or biological determination of the sex. The functions combined within the masculine polarity, for Beckett, are those of immobility and the imperative. Immobility and the imperative is the combination of masculine polarity. A man, within Marx, within <coughs> A man is one who remains motionless in love. <laughs> by, by retaining the name. By retaining the name. Motionless, but retaining the name that found flaw. And by prescribing the law of continuity. Yet, because the narrative function is missing, this prescriptive immobility remains mute. So a man is also in love uh, uh, somebody which uh, say nothing. <laughs> uh, in the case of love, a man is the silent custodian of the name. And because the function of wandering is missing, to be a man, with all marks you want, to be a man is also to do nothing that bears witness to this law, but only to return motionless in the dark, <laughs> its powerful abstract conviction. That is man. The feminine polarity combines wandering and narrative. It concurs not with the fixity of the name, but with the infinity of its unfolding in the world, in the narrative of its glory. It does not stick to the sole prescription without proof, but it organizes the constant inquiry and verification of the capacity of law. To be a woman, in the context of love, is to move about under the question of meaning, rather than the male question of names. So we have a fate of inquiries, as well as its perpetual recounting in a story. Love exists as the determination of this polarity, which supports the four functions and distributes them individually. This is why love alone calls for the observation that there is indeed man, immobility of the imperative, the guarding of the name, and woman, wandering of a truth, consequences of the name within speech. Without love, nothing will bear witness to the two of the sexes. Instead, there will be one, and then again one, but not two. There will not be man and woman. Only within love, you have man and or, it's the same thing, empirically, man and man, or woman and woman, but always with the polarities, always with the masculine and feminine polarities, because you have a necessity of the combination of the four functions. 